Hello, welcome back to Blender Sushi Live Noding. This is going to be uh, quite a short video and we're gonna have a look at how we can do the Alembic export import using animation nodes and spare chop. Um, we know that with Blender 2.78 and and the future updates, we're gonna have this, um, we already have this uh, Alembic export import and I tested with animation nodes and spare chalks. <clears throat> At first, um, animation nodes um, object animation seems to work fine, but the deforming mass geometry, um, whether I'm using animation nodes or spare chalk, doesn't seem to work unless there's a there's this quick trick and hack that that I found that um, kind of enable that um, feature. First of all, I'm gonna just like a run through this uh, experiment using Blender just to do the export and import of the Alembic. Um, I'll, I'll show it to you. So for animations, there is like a animation that's a more like object level transformations, but there is also animation that's a kind of deforming the mesh. So I kind of separate those two and I will show you what's the difference between those two and how Alembics kind of handle it in Blender. Um, this is kind of like uh, my own observations. If I'm missing something or um, if there's something that uh, I kind of uh, didn't mention, please let me know in the comments below. But this is how I think of the of the Alembic stuff, okay? So let's say we have like a uh, Taurus. And if you are just using the <coughs> Blender's own modifier, um, let's say just like the displace modifier because it's, I know that it's gonna be deforming the objects um, deforming the mesh and so I will I'll apply this uh, cloud texture I did it a couple of times already so this should be quite easy to follow so this is a, an object and it has a cloud texture kind of pushing the vertices now what I want to do is uh, just assign a An empty objects um, to the texture so we can kind of uh, move move the texture but as you know if we are also move the objects the texture is gonna be swimming um, that's kind of the effects that I want so and I want to do a little bit of animations maybe just a short hundred frames animation um, I'm gonna enable this uh, auto recording of animation so now if I'm moving the object and rotating scaling rotate it again and move the objects um, Blender is gonna record all that and let's do a quick export in the Alembic so file export Alembic and make sure we have a start and end frames uh, set um, yeah, we can leave the rest of the options there. It's gonna export the camera as well, unless we tick this uh, selected objects only. So this is a quick test. Quick test, Blender, export, anim. So export Alembic. Um, seems to be finished. I'm gonna save this just in case. Blender, anim. Now I'll open a new file. You need to delete that and file import Alembic. Go to desktop and let's find quick test Blender export anim and we can leave the op uh, import option there. Import Alembic. Now we should have our object and. It is deforming, it is also transforming, scaling, rotating, and moving in the <coughs> position. So all good. All 100, per, uh, 100 frames has been imported as Alembic. And if we, if we have a look, um, there are actually two places where we can observe the Alembic. The first one is the modifier, the mesh sequence cache, and the other one is constraint. So there is a transform cache constraint um, also applied for these objects 
if I actually turn off the constraint, you will see that the, the object will still deforming as a mesh, but the transformation is uh, kind of turned off. I can turn it back on. And the cool thing is, uh, let me uh, let me try also turn off the mesh sequence cache. And the transform is, st is still there, scaling, rotating. Um, and we also can scale the transformation, so that's also one thing that I found um, earlier today. So yeah, deforming and scaling, and we can also kind of override the frame um, in here. If we override the frame, we can animate it. Just control control the animations, the Arabic animations um, using your own frames. You can kind of uh, loop it, or you want to do like a ping pong kind of animations. You can control all that. Um, maybe using animation nodes. Okay, so let's do. Let's go to the next test. It's gonna be um, sphere chalk deforming animations. Um, normally, the way I think of animation nodes and sphere chalk as an add-ons, um, they both are using nodes and, and they're they're both procedural. <clears throat> I like to think animation nodes to be able to. Um, control the objects animations while spread chalk is more for the mesh kind of deforming and kind of generating so let's uh, that's uh, that that's what I'll do but we know that animation nodes can also deform in the mesh but we just gonna do animations for today so I will do something that's uh, really really simple <clears throat> maybe I did this in the past but I'll do it again um, so I'm just gonna use a torus as well because torus has a um, yeah it's a better shape than the, the cube I guess easier um, easier for eyes so three torus and I'm gonna save it so this is an demo alembic io import export um, yes save this and this is the initial position so we have to tell animation nodes that we, we have the initial position so this is I'm in the animation nodes tab panel just select the objects and click from current transform now each objects have a like a initial position select those three and group it control G now I'm gonna load it in animation nodes Use the objects from group, objects from group node. Select the group, and I will turn off this stuff because it's slowing down Blender. Okay, now I will kind of just apply like a random wiggle rotation and scaling into these three objects. So object transform output. Okay, so apply um, assign the objects into that guy so for each of these of these objects we're gonna now we're gonna you see how they they kind of jump into zero 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 that's because we need to use the initial transform and plug the information into rotations location rotation and scale rotation rotation and scale okay now we have the initial transforms back and what we're gonna do is kind of like a uh, push and rotate and wiggle it. So let's use a um, vector wiggle for the location. Um, but wait, I need to use vector math. So let's do it like this. So we have the initial position plug that in there and then we have vector wiggle for each of the um, torus we're gonna have different wiggles so I plug in the index into the seed and plug in the result into the location and now use a frame time frame in plug into the evolution so now the torus all three torus gonna be um, kind of 
wiggling in the in its position um in their positions. Um, next we want to apply the wiggle into the scale. So vector wiggle, another vector wiggle for the scale. We actually can use the same wiggle if you want. Let's use the same wiggle and plug the plug in the scale and then add it. So this is what we get. So it's pretty random, but that's okay. Um, these three objects are actually just uh, transforming though. It's not deforming. It's transforming in the object level. Let's do the rotation as well. Euler wiggle. So Euler wiggle is good. Let's plug in. Let's use a Euler math and just add the two. Plug the index into the seed. Euler. So you know this is all just pretty random in all directions and also use the frame plug into the evolution and increase the speed perhaps okay now just a uh, three torus objects randomly transforming okay if we want we can also randomize the vertices of these objects um, maybe I should do that but in the in a bit I'll save this one and I'll export uh, these three objects file export alembic 100 frames this is all, all the animations is all um, procedural um, selected objects only and export Okay, seems to be working. Now open a new empty blender um, file. Import alembic from the desktop. An demo alembic. I think that's the one. So import alembic. Now we have uh, three objects kind of uh, transforming. Um, so it's all good. Um, seems to be respecting the animation nodes animations. If you look at the under constraint, we have the transform cache constraint and it's all good. We can scale it, we can turn it off per objects. It's actually really cool that we can uh, kind of having the effects only influencing the objects. So that's really like a 100 score for animation nodes. Let's go back to animation nodes and save this. Now instead of just animating in the transform, I will also deforming the object. So random vertices offset should do the job. Um, this is where things get a little bit tricky. Um, so we can do it for all these objects. Um, let's see. Plug that in. And we need to have object instances apparently object instance and we need to have object list plug the instance instancer we know we're gonna have three instance and Now just plug this into the for the final result. Um, let's see what happens if I plug that in like that. So now, so all three objects seems to be deforming and. kind of doing it but maybe not quite perfect um, no it's actually doing it's fine um, see what's happening here is actually the a 
of course with uh, with animation nodes and spread chalk when you are doing this uh, modif uh, modification of mesh it will generate a new mesh you can kind of uh, cheat that kind of hack so that the, the mesh goes back to the original if you want um, wonder if I should do that I could actually kind of uh, Hyping back to the original object. Um, if I disconnect this guy, and I know we have the object mesh data. Plug in the instancer there, and the output goes back there. Um, I don't think it's gonna work like, like that. Maybe we can use some um, object copy, copy object data. So uh, copy object data from the instancer into the original object, and now back to the original. Doesn't seem to work either. Maybe I screw up the setup. Get back to where we were. So, I think we are up to here, and um. Okay, that's a thing that's uh, what we need. Shouldn't do too crazy stuff, so that's the original, I'll hide it. If I'm not wrong, we can actually kind of, uh, we can cheat the deformation and the transformations. Well, anyway, in order for this to work, um, we cannot just file export the LMB. The trick here is actually to use a to use a displace modifier and then just turn off the string. So that's uh, by doing that, we kind of um, kind of forcing Blender to think um, of animation nodes and spread chalk as uh, as a modifier or something like that so if I'm exporting this guy now file export alembic 100 frames um, export now let's see what's gonna happen normally if you don't have any modifier and you, you are deforming the mesh using animation nodes or stretch off blender will not recognize it and blender think that the objects doesn't have any kind of mesh deforming so it's it's not gonna export the alembic properly but if if we apply like a one of the modifier that's uh, deforming the mesh we can kind of hack it um let's have a look let's re-import the alembic okay we get uh we have that guy and we have the original and also the deforming the other guy also get exported there we go that's a uh, that's the alembics you see how how fast the alembic is it's a uh, like a uh, that's brilliant that's um that's exactly how it should work um and the trick is uh, like i said you need to just apply just apply like a deformer into into the objects that deforming and just turn off the deformer that should do the job let's um, let's have a look how we can do it using spreadshop um, let's do a couple of things inside spreadshop file save as spreadshop alembic export io 001 
So perhaps it's, uh, we have. Let's start with this uh, torus. Import objects in. Oops. Stretch up tends to crash Blender somehow. Um, I I don't know why. Maybe. Maybe um, if you want to use Spreadshop, create the node tree first and then create the objects, not the objects first and then and then the node tree. It tends to crash. Uh, other than that, it's pretty stable. Reopen. Okay. Save. Objects in. Um, get selection. Now I have this guy. And I will deform the mesh um, using random mice random mice input vertices plug this in there and use a matrix um, let's use a viewer draw first I know that I'm deforming and um, there's <coughs> there's also one thing about um, spreadshop if you are kind of scaling and reposition the original original mesh if it doesn't follow that, you need to, of course, apply the matrix, matrix apply, and then apply the the transformation you you have there. So now, now it should be working fine. Um, I will create like a, maybe a quick random animation here. So just a kind of reposition and scaling the object okay like that so that should be that should be good <clears throat> if we are um, I believe if I'm exporting the mesh now it's uh, it should uh, it should it's not gonna work right away like I said um, this uh, I'll, I'll show it to you viewer B mesh mk2 so this is gonna output uh, like a new mesh object like that. Okay, so it's still deforming and yeah, still doing that. Maybe I will also add a plug in the frame number into the seed, so it's kind of uh, deforming like that. Okay. Now let's try and let's try export this without uh, without using the deformer. Okay, this is not gonna work. You will see that uh, it's trying to export something. File new and now import the alembic from the desktop. Spreadshop alembic export import it. Now you see this animation works. This is the object, um, just the object animations, but this spreadshop. Uh, mesh only import like the first uh, it's already deformed but it's not doing any animations and it it doesn't look at the deformations in other frame so that's uh, this is wrong should go back to the file and then now if I select this um, deforming mesh um, that's we did inside spreadshop okay and apply just apply a displacement you see it's kind of grow a little bit you just turn off turn off the deformations and if now if I save it as a new file and export it out again 100 frames export I believe now it should uh, it should work okay for uh, save file new blender file file import Alembic from desktop spreadshop Alembic export import okay now you see we have the original objects and also the deforming objects um, it's all working fine working perfectly uh, what's interesting though uh, the way we set it up with this guy um, it's only deforming the mesh, even though it's kind of moving and transforming. It's only the um, the deformations on the mesh. It doesn't have objects constraints. So this is um this is like a stretch of strings. Really, um, 
it's it can generate and modify the mesh and you can apply transformation to the mesh on on each frame kind of a uh, really really cool actually if we we also um I'll hide the original torus and then if we actually um, create a random torus using special, I'll do it real quick. So matrix, um, you know that if you use matrix in here and then we use like a random vector, it's kind of like generating the torus, um, but it, but this is um. Um, let me think. Uh, let me scale the vector first. Float. So I'm scaling the vector. So they're they're kind of in a random place now. They're animating the same. Um, although maybe it's uh, it's losing the animation from the original, but. That's okay. Um, we can just randomize it like that. Um, if uh, if you notice here, uh, what we have at the moment is like uh, five different objects, and here you wanna, if you want to export this out, you want to make sure that each one of them has a this uh, deformer applied. But if you want to have just a single object, you can um, apply the matrix to the mesh. Apply matrix to the mesh. This is um, also useful. So you just need to plug in the matrix there. Cut it from that guy. And do it like this. Now what you have is just a single mesh. You see it's just a single mesh, I'm selecting and deselecting and it still have the modifier. Now we can we can even uh, like randomize the we can randomize the rotations as well and maybe the scaling. Random let's use a random random number um, how many do we have? Five? Use random number and map map the range 0 to 1 to uh, 3 to 5 plug in the value into vector in like that um, with a random seed Maybe they are too big at the moment, maybe 0 0.2, 0 0.3 and 1. one point six. okay. And let's randomize the rotation as well. Angle, given an angle, uh, float. It's going to be 360 or 180, plug in there and uh, random rotation axis one three four five each one of them different okay okay that's a uh, that should do the job let's have a frame plug into the seed now it's a um, Spreadshot is kind of doing random stuff to these five torus. You can actually have more, so maybe ten. Randomize. Whoops! Uh, I plug in a uh, 190 into that guy. That's very dangerous. Okay. okay that's good. That's a single object with a displacement modifier applied, but it's with a strength of zero. File, export Alembic, and export the frame. Let's save this as new file. 
file export alembic 100 frame um, this should do the job. Um, there is one more thing that um, I, I kind of want to talk about. If we have like a um, vertex color created using sphere chalk or even if you hand painted the vertex color, it will only export at the first frame. Um, I don't know why, maybe it's a maybe it's a bug. But basically if you are if you have the vertex color tick on the alembic, it's gonna export the vertex color. You can import it uh, import back that mesh, but then it's not gonna export the animation uh, whatsoever. So that's a maybe it's a bug. I really should tell Blender developers um, if uh, one of the Blender developers um, is watching this video, then hopefully you guys can fix it. Um, okay, new Blender file, file import Alembic desktop. Special element import, so it's a uh, only six around six megabyte. We have the original Taurus, we can delete, and uh, we have this crazy this Taurus doing some crazy random stuff. But you see how fast it is. Um, you notice, and if uh, I use smoothing, of course, slow down the thing. So I'm gonna leave it like that. It's super fast and this guy is using the mesh modifier with uh, even the yeah um, I cannot scale it somehow the scaling doesn't seem to work I think the scaling is more for the constraint um, wait there is nothing in under object constraints in this alembic but just the uh, this guy so well, one thing i notice as well with a if i turn on off right and try to scrub it doesn't work but if i play back and then scrub it it's it's working and you know that we can do funky stuff with a with any attribute so if you have like a 100 alembic um, objects got imported you can kind of randomize those 100 um, you randomize the, the frame, just off-write the frame and then use animation nodes to control those stuff so yeah this is really really powerful um, in fact I'll do this, uh, I'll do that, I'll import alembic I'll import the same alembic and now I have I have two of them I can give a color So there you go. You can have like a uh, hundred of this guy, and Blender will still uh, load it really fast. And this is like um, I think like a perfect. I think kudos for Blender developers to give us this ability to export and import um, um, Alembic. Now we can kind of maybe if I we want to export it to other three D package like Maya or Houdini or Cinema Four D or model whatever um, it should work um, and perfectly so that's a uh, that's brilliant um, hopefully the alembic is continuously being developed and it will be much better in the next version okay so that's a uh, that's all for this live noting video um, leave a comment if you have any question um, you can leave a like on the video and subscribe to the channel so I can make more videos like this in the future Thanks again for watching uh, and tuning in. Um, I'll see you next time.